everybody, it's Punchline! What is up, boxing fans? It is another episode of Punchlines, and I'm excited to announce our guest today, Mr. Omar Juarez. He'll be fighting in either December or January against Mr. Austin Dulé, who you see there in, with uh, Rayo, and he's supposed to fight uh, Ro Roly Romero a few months ago, and he's one of the many talented fighters out of the hotbed that is Texas, and I'm honored to have you on, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing real, real good. You know, I'm staying ready, staying, staying active, and I'm excited, man. And you're from Texas, but you're out in camp in, in Vegas. And um, how long is this camp going to be for you? About eight weeks? Yeah, about eight. We're looking at about eight weeks. Um, I mean, I, I've been staying in the gym, but here mainly what we're getting is is the sparring, bro. Here, here in Vegas, it's like the boxing capital. So we're getting all the good sparring here. Yeah, and the the weather's good too, so you can do road work year round. And yeah, yeah. Definitely. Were you back home in Texas? What's your home gym, Davies? No, it's in back in my hometown, Bronzeville. Uh, we have our own gym. It's uh, called RGV Elite. I'm the I'm the first pro that that we've had, and um, my little brother Sebastian Juarez as well. He's basically following my footsteps, and we have we have our whole team. We, we've been nationally ranked a couple of times, and we're we're slowly building ourselves up. That's really sick, and that's Brownsville. That's like uh, that's not too far from Corpus Christi, right? Yeah, it's two hours south. Like we're like yeah. I'm like in the bro, like, the border is like ten minutes from my house. Like we're like very very tip of Texas. <laughs> oh yeah, I've, yeah. Texas is so damn big though. Two hours seems like nothing, but um, yeah, bro. <laughs> do you, how do you feel seeing like how many? rising stars and just stars in general are coming from your home state like does it make you proud to be i mean everybody from texas is proud anyway but like to represent that in the ring and seeing like the the names alongside you from there oh absolutely and a lot of those names i look up to them i've i've, I've been in the gym with them as well and it's it's exciting it's definitely hard work paying off but um we all gotta set the example i mean obviously the, the world champion spence and the charlotte brothers are definitely sending the example, but I feel like the up and coming people, prospects, you know, the, the current champions, um, Brandon Figueroa, you know, Jesse uh, Rodriguez, uh, Joshua Franco, Mario Barrios, uh, Benajara, like we, we all, we're all representing Texas proudly and, and we, we just gotta, we gotta keep pushing, bro. We gotta keep pushing because a lot of us have, we've experienced losses. We've, we've gotten, uh, it's gone very difficult throughout our careers, but I, I feel like this is what, only makes us greater. We just got to keep pushing, push through adversity. Now, losing sucks in anything, but it's such a necessary part of life. And it, like, we live in an era of boxing now where people are so afraid of losing that O on their record to where they feel like it's it's the end of the road. And you already, you know, have one on your record, but you're already, you know, ranked back in the top fifty of your weight class. Like I'm, I'm sure it wasn't easy to to deal with that defeat early on. But do you think it made you better because of it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It, it made me into the fighter I am today, and it's just going to make my story, you know, more interesting. Um, like you said about the everybody looking at the O. I remember, I mean, joining the sport, I never looked at it that way. To me, it was just I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm going to continue training hard. I'm going to continue staying in the gym, but because I feel like. A lot of what gets fighters on focus is what happens outside of the gym. And I always say that's that's the hardest part. You know, boxing's 90% mental, 10% physical. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And I'm just blessed that I have the, the best team, the best support system for me to stay in the gym, for me to be comfortable in the gym. For Even when I come out here to be uncomfortable, I have a gym to train at. You know, I'm, I'm incredibly blessed, bro. And I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to mess that up. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm dedicated 100%. I'm disciplined 100%. I've never done drugs, never drank in my life. To me, this is like my lifestyle. This is exactly what, what I prayed for. So I'm, I'm all in. I'm, I'm going all in. As soon as I lost, I looked at it just like the amateurs, bro. Like the amateurs, we win, we lose some. We, we just got to keep pushing forward. And that's what got me here today. Like I had a lot of losses in the amateurs. I mean, my first 10 amateur fights, I, I completely lost. But I told myself that, you know, I wanted to be something in this sport. And at the end of the day, talent doesn't really do much in this sport. A lot of fighters have a lot of talent. But what, what I've seen that always wins is the consistency, the discipline, the 
the drive to want to get better, even though you get your ass kicked in sparring or even though, you know, like myself, I got knocked down for the very first time. You know, I, I, I experienced a loss. It was a very, very emotional, but it took me like a day or two to feel sorry for myself. And after that, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't got anything else. I don't have anything else. I haven't, I've put so much love, time, effort, and everything into the sport. I got to keep pushing forward. There's, there's no way, there's no way to go just forward. And that's what I did, man. And, and, you know, thank God that I have the best support system. I have, I have a PVC on my side of Al Heyman. So they put me, I, I believe I lost in like around June, June 29th. And then um, they ended up putting me back in the card in, in California, September, I believe. And then after that, in February, it was when I won my, my first title, the, the WBC international title against, at, against Carl. Yeah. At 140. Well, it was supposed to be 140, bro. But what happened with that fight was he came in like four pounds overweight. Um, originally, the weight was set up at 141. So I was like, all right, I, I can make it. That's that's my normal weight. You know what I mean? He comes in at 45.8. And I and then they ended up telling me last minute that it was going to be 42. So then I was like, all right, I, I got another pound to have in my, my system. So then. I weigh in at 141.8. He comes in at 145.8. So technically, our fight was a welterweight fight, and that's a welterweight title. Now, but your fight coming up against Dulé, is that at 140, or are you, are you up yeah, at welterweight? That, that, now? Yeah, that, I, that okay. was going to be at 140. Yeah, definitely. But I don't know what happened this last fight, but I was already there. I had already put in all the hard work. I wasn't going to pull out. They even offered to, to use 10-ounce gloves, and I said no. Um, yeah, man, it is what it is, but um, I'm incredibly blessed. We came up with the win, and it was it was a good learning experience. But I'm still going. That was a rowdy fight too, because the the first half, the first half, you dominated for the most part. You know, you hit him with a lot of heavy shots. And Ryan, he's a friend of the show. We've had him on before. Uh, that was a fight he wanted a rematch in because in the second half of the fight, you know, you got he had to dig deep to get back into the fight, and and you had him bloodied up pretty good, but you had to dig deep to make sure that he didn't take that fight from you. Did, was there ever a moment where you were afraid that you might be losing another win? Like you might, another win might be slipping out of your hands or was it, were you just determined to do whatever you had to do to get that win, to get your hand raised? Yeah, I was just determined to, to get the win. I wasn't thinking throughout the rounds. Um, it was definitely a very, very tough fight. He has a lot of experience, very strong fighter. But um, I feel like I fought that fight completely wrong and I made it harder than, than, than it should have. You know what I mean? I should have stick to boxing instead of trying to knock him out since the first round. But it was, like I said, it was a good learning experience and you know, on to the next. Yeah, because you've, I, I've noticed that in a few of your fights because uh, every punch you throw is so hard. Like, I was, what is this guy's cardio routine? Because if I hit a bag like that, I get exhausted. Like, I, I mean, yeah. obviously, but it you know not to give away the game plan or anything for your upcoming fight but are you focusing a little bit more on boxing and not just going for the kill all the time yeah definitely bro you're you're, you're spot on that that's that, that's what i feel like i was doing wrong in that fight was i was wasting too much energy throughout just trying to knock him out like i said and at the end of the day i have 10 rounds to to do work to box and I, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm a way, way better boxer than everybody has seen. So that, that's what we've been sticking to, you know, combinations, distance. And, I mean, that's what I love about here in Vegas. The sparring is like everybody's IQ is, is quick here, and I like it. So it's definitely going to help me with my game. Yeah, and there's a lot of good trainers there too. And, and just fighters and even fighters that aren't in your weight class just to, just to pick their brain and get advice from. Yeah, them. There's so, so many. And – Ryan Ryan is not an easy out for anybody, and the only people he's he's a quote unquote easy out for are the people who belong in the upper echelon of their weight class, like you know your friend Mario, who's also a friend of the show. You know he he beat Ryan, but Mario's a fantastic fighter, and and you're a fantastic fighter. So just to come to get a win over him, I don't want to call him a gatekeeper, but you know he's he's better than that, but. Only good fighters can beat Ryan Carl. So yeah, coming out of that, getting your hand raised, did uh, just that feeling, because it's the biggest win in your career so far, name-wise, like did that just instill a new type of motivation and, and confidence in you moving forward? 
Mm, not really, man. Not really. It just, it just, uh, by being honest, like when I, I, I knew my hand was going to get raised, but I was, I was kind of disappointed in my, my performance. Like, like I said, I, I made it harder than, than it was. And, and I feel like I could have made it an easy night for me, but I, I just fell in love with that, with that adrenaline rush. And, and I fell in love with just single punched it. So that's, that's really where I messed up. So the whole time I was just like, oh, man, like I, I did bad. I did bad. I didn't do so good. I did like, I, all right, like it's badass. We got the win, but like, I got to get back to the gym. And, oh man, that's, that's, I mean, that's the life of an athlete though. Like if you, I, I ask every fighter that question and every fighter who is at the top of their game. And it's the same thing when I did stand up comedy. It's like, even if you have a good set, like when I do really good in the crowd and I go back and listen to it, I'll realize I missed a line or I yeah. messed up delivering a certain way. And it's all I'll think about. But having that mindset, it's exhausting because you always feel like unfulfilled and unsatisfied until you get to your your bottom line goal. But it's what pushes you to get better. But do you have anyone around you? Because it, if you get hyper-focused on just what you did wrong and how to improve that, do you have anyone around you who kind of helps balance it out and be like, no, but you still did really well. Yeah, definitely, bro. I have my wife, my wife, Alexa. Uh, I recently got married in uh, May 20th. Congratulations. And, um, uh, thank you, bro. <laughs> and she, she's that person that, that helped me, you know, helps me even in my wins. You know, like, like you said, I'm very, I'm very, I'm my biggest uh, critic. I've always had that mentality of never satisfied that I, I could have done better. I could have done better. And the, of, there, of course, there are fights where I'm like, all right, I did badass. I, I, I take my week off to mentally, like emotionally detox from the sport. But I feel like it's just a part of me so much that like even on my rest days, I catch myself shadow boxing. Even on my days where I'm asleep, like I'll, I'll be dreaming about sparring and I'll wake up because I want to spar. Like it's different stuff, bro. It, it, it's weird how this lifestyle literally gets like in you and, and it becomes you. And it's, it's um, I definitely have like, my outlets, my ways of escaping from boxing. And that's, that's what I do on my days off. And, and what, what would those include? I'll go golfing, uh, swimming. I go to the beach with my wife, uh, watch movies. I mean, just anything but boxing, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been boxing? Cause you're what, you're 23, 24. Yeah, I'm 23. I'm going to turn uh, 24 in June. I started at eight years old. And did, did you start that because it's what you wanted to do like have you known for a while that this is what you wanted to be or was there other sports that you you participated in or different goals that you had at the time nah yeah bro it was a process it definitely I, I feel like for every fighter it was a process but my my thing was just different I I, I have a I had an older brother but well I have an older brother who, who had at the time was boxing so all the attention was him he was 10 years old I was eight years old and I just did it just because he was doing it you know what I mean but eventually like it's a time where you got to decide what you're going to do or not. And I was about maybe 13. My brother had already left the sport to play college football and, and stuff like that. Like, he, well, he wanted to do his own thing. He's playing college football right now. So he ended up sticking with football. And my dad asked me, like, ultimately, we did this for my dad. But he asked me, like, hey, like, there's going to come a point in your life where you're going to have to decide what you want to do. It's like, I'm not saying it's going to be boxing, but you have to decide. And to me, I wanted to do everything, bro. I was you know, track, basketball, football, everything. Like, I, I loved being an athlete. But he did tell me, he said, like, you have to dedicate yourself to just one thing so you can be good at it. And uh, for some reason, I, I chose, I feel like boxing chose me rather than me choosing it because I didn't like it, bro. I didn't like getting hit. I didn't like, uh, I didn't like hitting people. I didn't like sparring. I didn't like training. Like, I didn't like anything about it when I was younger. But what I loved about it was how it turned my life around in a positive way. It gave me confidence that I never knew I had. It gave me determination. It gave me discipline with, with just things in general in life. And that's where I was like, you know what? As uncomfortable as it is, God blessed me with this talent. I got to use it, you know, obviously to help other people. And um, I've, that's what I've been doing. And since we started the, the sport of boxing, we've been doing everything we can to help other people and to help ourselves and when I, when I say it changed my life in a positive way, it's not financially. It's more like it built my character to who I am today. And that's what really makes a positive impact in my career, in, in and out of the ring. You know what I mean? And that's why I feel like it's a big blessing that, I'm, that I'm doing boxing. And as much as I don't like you know, hitting people, it's a, it's a, it's a sport. And that's the way I look at it. It's always, it's always a sport. I'm a different person when I'm in the ring and I'm a different person when I'm out. 
Now, have have you grown to love those things about the sport more, or is it still something that is just a nagging, just pain for you? The training and the hitting and the getting hit. Oh no, no. I, I was about maybe 13, 14 where I I I actually like decided, you know what, this is what I want to do. And I immediately like fell in love with it. I, I dropped everything, dropped, not dropped my friends, you know what I mean? But like I just became that person that didn't do anything anywhere and just stuck to boxing. And I I grew to fall in love with it. Like now, like even on my rest days, bro, like I'm a I'm a gym rat. I love to be in the gym. I love to I love training people. Like it's just a part of me now and I I enjoy doing it. I love it. And you said it is interesting. I love hearing when people say that they want to use boxing to to help other people because a lot of people they think of it as such a destructive sport because of the nature of it inside the ring but they don't realize how constructive it is because it does build character if you approach it the right way and it does you, it, it's a craft more so than it is a violent interaction between two people and it's something you have to work on consistently it's what's beautiful about it but it it is something that can be used to help other people and change other people it's one of the goals i have from starting this podcast what what are your goals of using it for to help other people what what are you aspiring to do with boxing outside of the ring not just with your accomplishments inside of it to help those other people well i, I mean i since i started as a pro um i've been associated with this nonprofit organization called down by the border and they help back back at home they help um kids with special needs they they, they do events for them they do proms for them they do they do a lot of stuff for them and i've been the, the master of ceremonies at a couple of their proms. I've, I've been the special guest at a, a lot of their events. And when, every time that I step in the ring, I, I always have a, a t-shirt that, that represents them. And I've been helping up the special needs community. I've been going to all the elementary, middle school, and high schools there in my hometown and uh, giving motivational speeches uh, about the six key principles and how to achieve your goals. I don't really go to speak about boxing, bro, because like you said, it's very, the reputation is very, uh, destructive and and people don't really get boxing in that sort of way but when i really like explain it and explain the beauty of behind it about self-discipline self-worth and, and really having a strategy and having a team and, and when i express that and i explain it and i compare it with school and with life the like the output we get is, is, is beautiful bro it really is and a lot of a lot of people back in my hometown see me as an inspiration that's what i've always wanted as a little kid you know i've always been like man like nobody Nobody from Brownsville has done anything. Nobody from Brownsville, like, why is it that nobody is a world champion? I, why is it that we don't have football teams? We don't have, we don't have anything, bro, honestly. Like, we're, we're one of the poorest cities in the nation. And that's really what motivated me when I was smaller. I was like, no, I'm going to be the first. I'm going to be the first. And when I, when I get there, I'm going to help other people that are, like, trying to be like me. You know what I mean? And it's, it's beautiful, man. It really is, especially the, the older kids. They see, because I started motivational speeching at, 17 as soon as i got out of, of of high school i started and the reason why my connection was so good with them was because they saw me just like them they, some of them were my age you know what i mean and i even went to some of the juvenile schools as well and 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 it's crazy bro it's crazy what this sport can do it's, it's crazy what confidence it could give to somebody because some some of those kids actually went to the gym and during the pandemic as well every friday we were training kids with special needs for free and we've had a lot of people try the sport bro and it's changed them in, in, a, in a positive way like i like i said like i felt once as a little kid uh, i'll give you an example one kid uh there at the gym he still goes to this day he's been there for about three four years his name is bruce and and he he has special needs and when bruce showed up to the gym he, he didn't look at anybody he didn't talk to anybody he didn't want to he don't want anything to do with anybody started started boxing started seeing the beauty of the sport started actually like learning the sport and everything and he, he even sparred a couple of times now when bruce shows up to the gym he gives everybody a hug he has conversations with people like his mom has even told us that that he's improving in school it's like crazy crazy stuff bro that nobody would have thought that boxing could do and that we're you know not just myself but my dad my family we see that it's just something that makes us feel good you know what i mean we want to help out as many people as we can. And that's, you know, it's definitely a process, but we're going and we're, we're, we're doing it. That's, that's awesome. Man. I love hearing things like that. I think it's, it's great that you're doing things like that. And I dealt with something similar, you know, 
because when I got out of the Navy and, you know, I was living back home in Vegas, I was, I was sleeping on my friend's floor, bro, for like a year. Oh, wow. And I was, I was working at lids making $11 an hour. And it's just, I felt like, you know, I, I didn't see any other veterans that were doing anything really, you know, that people who weren't already celebrities somehow, it, you know, except for my best friend, you know, he got out and he wanted to coach college football and that's what he did. And he did it for the college that he wanted to play for when he was younger, Virginia tech. And that's what inspired me to get, you know, back into boxing because, you know, I can't speak for anyone else, but I think what helped me with boxing was because I've loved it since I was a kid, but I never, I was like, man, I don't know if I could do that because it, it is scary. It is scary seeing two people hit each other and, it, and it's not like a street fight. It's two people who are trained to hurt people. Yeah. And, and you always tell yourself like, man, I would never be able to, you probably hear it all the time. I would never be able to do that. And then when they try it and they realize that they can do that, it's such a, a microcosm for other things in life. Because life sucks, dude, whether it's in the ring or out of it, life is hard. And, you know, you, you're going to encounter things where you might tell yourself you can't do it, but the inevitable reality is that you have to do it, you know? You know, like I had to quit drinking. I didn't think I could, but I had to. And Yeah, well, that's a big step, bro. That takes a lot. That, that, yeah. You should be proud of yourself, man. That, that's awesome. I am. Thank you. So I think when they look at boxing as something that's scary, something that they can't do, and then they just do it and they prove that they can do it somehow, or at least survive it and make it through. It does give you that confidence when adversity comes. Cause it's like, this is going to be hard. This is going to be painful, but I can be okay. You know what I'm saying? And I think, yeah. I think it's awesome that you're giving that to people. And I know, to, I know you mentioned the six principles. You don't have to go into too big a detail. Cause I know you, you know, you probably go for a while, but what are they? It's uh, no excuses, confidence, discipline, strategy, teamwork, and and the, the last one is self-worth. And, okay. and I basically explain, like, how no excuses I interpret into boxing, school, into just life, man. And, and then I say confidence, the same thing, discipline, the same thing. And I, I just go through them, bro, and, and, and they they really, really, they like it. They, they really like the speech because like I'm able to get down on their level and speak to them and be like, I wish I had a source of inspiration when I was your guys' age. You know, I'm here to tell you that you can do whatever it is you want in life and you just have to have no excuse and just go through them. And it's, it's beautiful, bro. Can you expand on the self-worth principle a little bit? Because the first five are a little um, like they make sense. You can kind of mm -hmm. fill in the blanks, but the self-worth, what do you mean by that? Well, I tell well, what self worth means is how you feel about yourself, and I always ask them like, a, a negative mind is a very very strong mind, and a positive mind is a very very strong mind. I said at the end of the day, when you enter the court, when you enter the classroom, when I get in the ring, I have to believe that I'm the best. When I enter the gym, I have to believe that I'm the best. If not, I'm not going to get anywhere. If not, my full potential will not come out. I'm not going to tell everybody else that I'm the best, but I always tell myself that I'm the best, and that, that's what I, I I tell them. You know, I. Say whatever it is you guys want to do in life, anything. Your your crazy dream could be crazy. Like at the end of the day, people are gonna look at you like you're crazy when you're trying to be successful. But the important part is as long as you believe in yourself. And a lot of people like, like don't relate to me because I, you know, I, I'm blessed with the support system of my parents. But a lot of kids, bro, that I've spoken to don't have parents or they don't have their moms or they don't have their dads. And that's where it gets really, really difficult. Where I have to tell them, like, look, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry that that has happened to you. And I'm sorry that you have to live life like that. But I, I still think that you could accomplish your dream, whatever it is. I mean, you want to be a model. I, I, I know you could be a model, but you have to believe that you could be a model. I could support you all the way. Your mom could support you all the way. We could take you to Vogue. But if you don't want to do it, then at the end of the day, you're not going to do it. You're not going to accomplish it. I said it's very important. And, and I'm blessed to have my parents. But at the end of the day, you have to believe that you're the best and just chase it. Chase that dream. Chase that dream. Have that tunnel vision that. Like myself, bro, like I have that tunnel vision. I'm going to become a world title. I'm going to get a world title. I'm going to stay world champion. I'm going to keep going from there. Just small, small steps, small goals, one at, well, one step at a time. Now, about that, like I don't want uh, – you definitely can't look past Austin Dulé. He's a tough fight. But getting that world title, your goal to get there, 
what's the time frame for that? What does the success of achieving that goal look like to you? I think it depends on how I do on my next fight, bro. And then the fight after that and the fight after that. I mean, I could, it could be soon or it could be later, but I'm, I'm working hard for it to be soon. Now is this fight with Dulé coming up? Is it for, um, is it for a title? Not a full fledged world title, obviously, but for like an intercontinental no. or something. No, it's not. No, and it's uh, it's gonna be on Fox. Yeah, I believe so. <clears throat> so, like, did you grow up watching boxing, or did you just do it? I did, bro. No, yeah, I did. Uh, my brothers and I, we love Roy Jones. We love watching Roy Jones. How mm -hmm. he would dance in the ring and stuff like that. His his speed was phenomenal. Like we we, we grew up watching Roy Jones, and um. We kind of, we kind of like interpreted his style in the beginning, you know what I mean? Right. And is that something you grew out of to and you became your own fighter, or are there fighters you look at now and try to take from? Oh uh, yeah, bro. There's a lot of a lot of good fighters that 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 I like watching now. And I mean, Roy was was good, but I mean, he was he was one of the cruiserweights, heavyweights. You know what I mean? So he was he was a lot bigger. But um, I love watching uh, Crawford. I love watching. Uh, Boots Ennis. I, I love watching uh, Lomachenko. I love watching Shakur. There's a lot of fighters I like watching. I just you know make my own style out of it. Yeah, they're all well. They're they're not all southpaw traditionally, but they all fight from the southpaw stance. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. And, and so do you. And do you? How long did it take you to realize that you had such an advantage being a southpaw, or is it just something you kind of figured out right away? Yeah, I I don't know, bro. Like I just started switching when I was like ten years old. Not, I, I don't know why. It was just my my feet would tangle up and stuff, and somehow I would catch myself in a southpaw stance. So like when I when I started doing it more and more in the amateurs, and I started seeing how difficult it is for a right-handed fighter to fight a southpaw, like I, that's when I started doing it. Started looking at the the literally the, the the sweet science behind it, like the technical part of being a southpaw, and it's it's fun, but it is definitely like. You got to know what you're doing and now you can get caught. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I got cocky in sparring one time and switched Southpaw and <laughs> it like you forget it, it's, it's not your feet and it's not your hand placement. It's where your head is. Like it does. Mm -hmm. It's not natural moving your head off the center line from a different stance. And I, I just got, I got popped pretty good. I didn't get knocked out, but that, it hurt. <laughs> like, yeah, hurt no, I bet, bro. Yeah, because you don't see those punches coming. Like it's in a weird angle where you're just like, boom, a straight left comes in or something. Right. Well, it's just like when a straight right comes in. I'm no, so used to slip in a certain way, and it's like there's like a little second of hesitation there, and like I mean, you know, any any yeah. amount of hesitation in boxing is no good. But um, so you, how many amateur fights did you have? At 120. And out of all the, like, who was the best person you fought in the amateurs? Mm. According to you, not according to everyone else. Probably uh, the uh, the top rank guy, uh, Tiger Johnson, Delonte oh, Johnson. You, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I fought him at nationals and he beat me. But um, that, that's probably the, probably the best one that I fought. He's good, man. He's a former yep. Olympian. He's very, very talented. Yeah, He'd, definitely. Would you like to get a fight with him in the pros eventually? I mean, I know oh, he's yeah, on bro. ESPN. Definitely in the but... future, bro. Yeah, definitely yeah. in the future. Who knows, man? If you could fight anybody right now, who would it be? <laughs> nah, bro. Not. I, I don't. Really, I'm not really looking at that. Um, I feel like if I do that, I, I'll, I'll just get on focused of what my, you know, the opposition that I have right now. So that right now, I'm just focused on, on Austin Dulé. And then, uh, do you have a prediction for this fight or just a win? Nah, just a win, bro. Just, I'm not gonna look for a knockout. I I know that my my skills will will pay the bills, but I, I'm I'm looking to just do a way way better in, uh, performance that I did last fight. <clears throat> and so you're you're in Vegas preparing. You're you're at pound for pound. Yeah. And did you bring a trainer with you or do you have a trainer out there that's going to be cornering you in the fight? Yeah. Oh, well, my dad's my trainer right now. Uh, he, we're here. The trainer for pound for pound as well. Rich, he's been helping me out a lot. And my manager, Bob Santos, he, he, uh, he's the one that, that, uh, recently got the uh, three world champions. Like in 
couple of weeks, bro. It was uh, uh, Carlos Adamas who beat uh, Montiel. Yeah, he has a couple of Dominican guys, doesn't he? Yeah, bro, the, the gym's full of Dominicans, bro. Um, and that's that's why I'm getting a really a lot of really, really good sparring. I mean, they're they're very smart. We're just watching them train, I'm picking up on a lot of things. But he uh also uh, uh Hector Garcia and um Alberto Puello. There you go. Oh yeah, the guy that beat um he beat uh, Akhmedov. Yeah, yeah, the, the guy that fought Mario and, and all those. Uh yeah. and then Garcia, I mean he when he, nobody saw him beating Colbert, Chris Colbert, but he dominated. Nah, those yeah, are those I'm are kidding. good guys. That's those are good guys to train with. Adamas is that that dude's scary at middleweight. Uh, yeah, people, bro, definitely people need to keep their eyes out on that guy. He's he's very 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 talented, man. Um, but you do you how you said you've been doing motivational speaking since seventeen. Is that something that you have hopes of expanding on in the future? Like you want to do more of that to bigger bigger audiences in the future yeah definitely bro definitely a hundred percent i i started there in, in my hometown but because that's that's really what i love listening to when i uh, growing up i love what i love listening to eric thomas uh some cause uh, cause the motto i i love listening to motivational speeches to like really really pump me up and i still do it to this day um and i just feel like words like when you break down like a certain goal you really really encourage somebody to do it and you just help them in in in, in that sort of way like it could it could do a lot because the mind is very very strong and i feel like every time that i speak like i connect if i just connect to one person out of the thousands like i've done my job and i i really really see myself you know doing it to like college campuses definitely but you know i gotta gotta become a world champion first <laughs> yeah Oh yeah. Well, I think it's on the horizon, bro. I really do. You're a very talented fighter. You're a very exciting and fun fighter to watch. And um, you, you just, you step to the center of the ring with like, I don't want to say no fear because that would mean that you're not exercising caution because you, you definitely do, but it's like, you're not afraid to throw down with anybody, you know? And it's, it's very refreshing to see, and it's awesome to see too, because everyone, all all of you young guys from Texas are all like that. Like everybody you mentioned earlier, I mean, uh, Brandon Figueroa, uh, another friend of the show, uh, Mario, Bam, and and Joshua. Like, like it's so cool. Like nobody talks about. Everybody thinks of L.A. Everybody thinks of New York when it comes to boxing, and then when they think of Texas, yeah, they think of Spence. They think of the Charlos, who are extremely talented. Don't get me wrong, but I think the rest of you guys, like it's like you guys need to watch this. And and there's so many. You're all entertaining, exciting to watch, man. And I'm really looking forward to this fight with Austin Dulé. I'm glad you have a fight coming up. Um, it, how many times do you want to fight next year? Because you've only fought once this year, haven't you? And it was in February against Ryan. Yeah, bro. Well, what happened with that? That camp actually. Um, we, we went to Philadelphia for some sparring, and I was sparring a southpaw. It was, it was a coincidence that I was a southpaw. I, I didn't I didn't even know that I was fighting uh, Ryan yet. And he, you know, speaking of southpaws, he had his lead foot like over me, and he hit me like in the back of like basically in the kidney. And what had happened was, we thought I thought it was just like ah, just like a little bruising. I just got to wait a little bit, but I had like a basically like an inflamed nerve in my rib. And we we it didn't heal, bro. It didn't heal. I just went into the fight like that, and and um, just took a very very long time to heal. It healed around maybe July. That's why I told him I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And we just been waiting for a date, and that that's that's where they they ended up saying our December. Well, I was actually supposed to fight in November, bro. That this morale card. I was supposed to fight this week. Well, tomorrow. Yeah, but um, I think something happened with 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 uh Austin Dulé saying it was, I don't know what was going to happen, so they they ended up moving it to December or January. Okay, and how many times do you want to fight next year? Hopefully, like if you had to choose, hopefully three times, bro, three three or four times. I'm really really hoping. And then, I mean, if you win in this fight and then step up the competition by into 2023, early 2024, you should be hopefully within one of the names that they're talking about because, but they do, the PBC doesn't do a good job of featuring you though. They do um, like when, 
Have you watched your fight back with Ryan Carl, but with the PBC commentators, like with Joe Goosen and all them? Because they had some uh, very yeah. good things to say about you, you know, and like they were doing it. They're doing a very good job marketing you when you do fight. So, you know, the only thing left to do is just get you in the ring more. And then, you know, you do your job, which you're more than prepared to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know before we get you out of here, man, is there anybody you want to shout out? I know uh, you have you know, your boys over there at Archetype Athletic that, you know, help make you stuff. Anything else, bro? Or you want to shout out them as well and highlight them? <laughs> no, yeah. Big shout out to Danny. Big shout out to, to Archetype Athletic. They helped me out with a lot of stuff, bro. I mean, even the, the sh training shirt that I'm wearing right now, they helped me out with, with my my pre-fight suits. Um, but just shout out to the city of Bronzeville. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Vegas for, shout out to Pound for Pound for allowing me to train here. Shout out to pbc shout out to everyone man just for everybody for this for, uh, for all the support and thank you bro thank you for having me hey absolutely man and then you know let's try to get you in some adams boots for this fight coming up for sure you know oh, that'd boy, be awesome man my boy carlos will be more than happy to help you out for that you know we'd love to see them on you and you know love to see them on your feet when you get your hand raised for that uh you're on instagram your handle is i am omar Horace, correct all one word yeah yeah and then you got a twitter yeah, the same thing. Twitter at, at I am Omar Juarez. All right. And you guys, uh, it's been an absolute honor to have you on here, man. I've been trying to get you on for a while. And <laughs> it, it's cool to finally meet you, you know, and you're down there in my hometown. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. And uh, I look forward to seeing you fight in January against Austin Dule on Fox. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. I really, really appreciate it, man. Hey, no problem, man. And just one last thing. Uh, this is for the people listening or watching, whatever it is life ain't easy man um the economy's bad right now and it just seems like as the days go on it's like the country hates itself more and more and a lot of people are having a hard time right now figuring out what to do if you could say anything to anybody who's just going through it and doesn't know what to do and is trying to get through it what would you tell them bro <laughs> honestly man like the, the, i mean this this is 100% what I believe everybody has an opinion to themselves, but just stay close to God, stay close to whatever Supreme being you believe in and just pray and, and promise you that the storm's not going to last for a while, but we just have to stay hard, stay disciplined and believe that we're all going to be okay. Like we, we have to, and our, and whatever specific craft that we're in, we're, we have to stay disciplined. Right. And I, it took me a long time to learn that because I had to go through a lot to get to where I'm at and I'm still not where I'm at. I, but you have to think about it like this. If, if you want something special, it's not going to be easy. And if you're asking for something special, such as for when you pray, like if you ask for a job, you have to get interviewed. And that person's going to want to see if you can do what it is you're asking for. And I believe that God or the universe or whomever, like you said, you believe in, if you're going to ask for something, they're going to be like, okay, well, let's see if you're ready. So it, there's hard time. Like, not everything's your fault. So if you're going through a hard time, it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to get through it. And if you choose to not go through it, then I think you might be asking for the wrong thing, you know? So yeah. and it goes back to what you're saying. Believe in yourself. Know your self-worth. If that thing is worth having, your self-worth has to be worth, you know, getting it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I I look forward to seeing you again. Um, I'm going to try to get find one of those T-shirts that you have that you said that you wear to the fights. And uh, thank you yeah. for what you do for them, man. And, and thank you for coming on, bro. It's been an honor. Nah, definitely, bro. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, Shane. All right, guys, this has been Punchlines. Thank you so much for listening. Give my man Omar a follow. Make sure you watch him fight in, on Fox in December or January. This has been Punchlines. We're out.